Brown leaves, black spots and leaf drop, these are some of the common problems of rubber plants. And these are signs of improper care. So in this video, I'm going to share how you can take proper care of your rubber plant to avoid these issues as well as end up with a healthy bushy plant. So let's begin. Both variegated and non-variegated versions of rubber plants are available and both have slightly different requirements. So watch till the end for proper information. You can estimate how much sunlight and water a rubber plant needs from the thickness and color of its leaves. First talk about the sunlight requirement. The general green and burgundy rubber plant as I have here have very pigmented deep green leaves which indicates the leaves are very packed with chlorophyll so they can prepare food with less light exposure. So these non-variegated versions can be grown inside a bit away from bright window but for better performance try to keep them in the brightest place you have or can provide an hour of the very morning sunlight. It keeps the plant compact and help to form more extended big leaves. On the other hand, the variegated versions of rubber plants have less chlorophyll. Even the green pigmented portion are paler green. That's why they prefer more light exposure than the non-variegated versions. They do best with two hours of the direct morning sun exposure, which intensify their variegation and color. Now in general, rubber plants are well known as indoor plants. But if you want a bold, big, healthy rubber plant, then try to provide them one hour of the very morning sunlight or keep them in the brightest place you have. Now let's talk about the water requirement. But before that, it will be highly appreciated if you hit that like button and also support this channel by subscribing. The rubber plants are very sensitive to overwatering because their leaves are broad, thick and hard, which means they can hold more water and the evaporation rate is low. So water your rubber plant when 60% of the soil feels dry. You can use the stick method to observe the moisture level. Simply insert a stick more than halfway deep into the media, then pull it out. If it comes out with sticking some soil, feel the soil moisture, and if it feels wet and sticky, it means the soil is wet from the inside, wait a couple of days, and then water the plant thoroughly until the water drains out from the bottom holes. The rubber plants are native to Southeast Asia, and they prefer more than 50% humidity in the air. Very dry and low humidity drop leaves or turn the leaves yellow. The potting mix is very important for rubber plant because they are sensitive to overwatering, as I said earlier. Also, they produce aerial roots, so they always prefer breathable potting mix. I prepared the potting soil by mix up two parts garden soil, one part cocoa peat, two parts compost, one part rice husk, and one part charcoal. Also, I have provided all the product links in the description box and pinned comment. Spring is the perfect time to fertilize rubber plants. Use nitrogen-rich fertilizer or 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio NPK fertilizer or you can use vermicompost as I do. Adding a cup of vermicompost which contains all the plant essential nutrients as well as incorporates microorganisms. Also, I like to add a half cup of rice husk compost which keeps the soil pH slightly acidic. Cleaning is very important for rubber plants. They have larger leaf surfaces and you will notice the dust is settling down over the leaves which can interrupt the photosynthesis process. 
I use a leaf cleaning solution that not only cleans the dust but also keeps the plant pest free. Mix 1 6th teaspoon of soap or shampoo, add 1 teaspoon of neem oil in a liter of water, and wipe the dust from the plant leaves. And after cleaning, you can see how shiny the leaves are looking. Now, how you can turn your rubber plant bushy. Tip pruning promotes multiple growths, but it is more effective for the mature thick stem rubber plants. Those have enough potential to promote multiple growth. Otherwise, these young rubber plants most of the time form a single shoot after tip pruning. Now, if you can provide proper soil, water and sunlight to your rubber plant, your plant will grow fast as well as will be pest and disease resistant. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section. Also, it will be highly appreciated if you support this channel by subscribing. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Take care.